Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to FXStreet.com's One Day One Topic on Trend Trading. My name is James Chen. I am the Chief Technical Strategist with City Index Group. And uh, today uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, trend, trend following and trend trading. Okay, great. So let's get started real quick. I, I, it looks like you could all hear me, and hopefully you could all see my uh, slides as well. Uh, today what I'm going to be doing, uh, as I usually do, is uh, provide you with some background information on how I look at uh, trading in the foreign exchange market, as well as uh, I'm going to be showing you a bunch of uh, examples uh, on uh, a couple different uh, currency pairs, uh, the ones that uh, obviously are, uh, from my point of view, are most trending uh, and have been for the last couple of months, which include the euro dollar as well as the dollar yen. So uh, I'm going to give you some background information on uh, exactly how I look at trend trading and uh, provide you with, uh, you know, some uh, pointers on techniques uh, for uh, entries and exits, as well as uh, uh, provide you with examples on how exactly I go about it. Okay, so let's get started real quick. As always, just a quick disclaimer here. Um, financial trading carries a high level of risk to your capital with the possibility of losing more than your initial investment and may not be suitable for all investors. Ensure that you fully understand the risks involved and seek investment advice if necessary. I'm going to leave that up just for a few seconds, and then we will move forward. Okay, and then just uh, very quickly about myself, uh, in case you are not familiar with who I am or what I do, my name again is uh, James Chen, and I am uh, the chief technical strategist uh, for City Index Group. We're actually based in the UK, uh, and we have uh, I'm sorry about that. We have uh, presence uh, throughout uh, uh, many different countries. Um, I've been an active forex trader and analyst since the inception of uh, retail forex back around uh, year 2000 and I use primarily technical analysis. Prior to the retail forex market coming out, I traded equities and futures as well. Uh, but ever since uh, forex came out, I've pretty much been um, concentrated primarily on trading in the forex market. I'm a chartered market te technician, which is a designation for technical analysts. I also uh, publish daily and intraday market analysis, which you'll be able to find on our website at City Index. Um, I've authored uh, many different articles, as you can see here. I've appeared in uh, many different places for interviews, as, uh, as well as uh, uh, for my analysis on uh, CNBC, Bloomberg TV, Reuters News, uh, etc. And I am the author of two books, Essentials of Foreign Exchange Trading and Essentials of Technical Analysis for Financial Markets, as well as with uh, FXStreet.com, uh, the DVD set, High Probability Trend Following in the Forex Market. So uh, that's enough about me. Now let me uh, just say, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to type them into the chat window, and I'd be more than happy to uh, to address them. Okay. So let's get started real quick. Okay. So as I mentioned uh, today, we're going to be talking about high probability trend following entries and exits. I'm going to be talking about a very simple approach. You know, if you've ever uh, heard me speak before or seen me uh, my writing or my articles or analysis or what have you, uh, you'll know that I have a lot of different uh, uh, strategies and and approaches to trading in the forex market. Uh, primarily, though, most of my uh, strategies are based upon uh, trend following, following the trend. For me, it makes the most sense because, uh, you know, essentially what you're doing is you're trading uh, with the, uh, the path of least resistance. Uh, you're, you're going with the flow of the market, and that's what I, uh, you know, almost always like to do. So uh, this is very fitting that today's uh, Today's topic at FXStreet.com is trend trading because that's uh, really right up my alley. Now, in terms of um, uh, entries and exits into trends, uh, you know, that's the tricky part, and that's what I'll talk about today. But in terms of uh, what I'm going to be, uh, the strategy or the approach that I'm going to sh be showing you today, it's uh, a very simple approach based upon uh, finding the trend and then following that trend using breakouts after pullbacks, okay? And I'll show you exactly how I do it on the charts uh, after I give you a, a brief intro, uh, introduction to, uh, to my approach, okay? So this is high probability trend following entries and exits. 
Okay. Now, I show this very often because, uh, for me, it's very, very important. Now, the, the primary, um, you know, uh, the primary philosophy here in terms of uh, how do you find entries and exits uh, within, uh, you know, within any market based upon the trend, well, first of all, you've got to be able to get in to a trade, and you've got to be able to get out. So as far as I'm concerned, there's one way to get into any trade, and that's at the right direction, in the right direction, at the best possible price. Uh, now, this is a very simple sentence, but uh, in it, uh, there are a lot of uh, nuances. So uh, if you talk about one way to get into any trade, the right direction at the best possible price, you know, it looks like it's easy, but what's inside the sentence? What does it really mean? Well, first of all, the right direction is simply the trend, okay? So you're going to be finding some way to identify the trend and then, uh, you know, resolving to trade only in the direction of that trend. Now, what does the best possible price mean? Well, that simply means that you want to get in to any trade uh, at a good price, at the best possible price you could find, which is usually on any type of a, a, a pullback or a, a pullback, a correction, a retracement, um, you know, uh, a consolidation, any rest within the trend, any pullback, any, uh, you know, uh, counter trend move within the trend, that arguably is the best possible place to get into, uh, into any trade. Why is that? Because uh, let's say, for example, there's an uptrend, and we see these strong uptrends, overall uptrends on the euro dollar and the dollar yen right now. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about in a minute. But uh, if you take a look at those uh, two, uh, those two currency pairs, uh, you know there are, there are many different opportunities to get into uh, this trend that's been going on for several months now, uh, based upon getting in after pullbacks, after corrections, okay, and getting in on getting in long on uh, the the overall uh, uptrend for both of these pairs. So the best possible price is is uh, you know on a pullback or retracement. What does that mean? Why is that? Because uh, if you're going long, you want to get in at a cheaper price. Okay, very simply. If you're going short, you want to get in uh, on as high a price as you can. Okay, so those are the best possible prices. So the right direction is with the trend. Okay, if it's an uptrend, the best possible price is as low as possible, as low a price as possible. And that means on a pullback or retracement. Uh, if you're going short uh, on a downtrend, the best possible price is as high as possible on a re uh, retracement or correction to the upside. Okay. Now, how do you know that that uh, retracement or correction is ending and going back into the direction of the trend? I'm going to talk about that in a second. Okay, so uh, that's one way to get in, and that for me is the best, the highest probability way to get into any type of trend trade. Now, there are two ways to get out, okay, at a loss or a profit. Obviously, we want to get out at a profit, but... Uh, you know, there, there are two ways to get out, and, you know, you have to face the facts that losses are part of trading, and uh, they should, you know, you should expect them because they will be a part of your trading. Now, if you're able to make it so uh, losses are incorporated into your plan, then at that point you can... Um, you could target uh, consistent profitability, okay? So you have to make losses a part of your trading plan. Okay, so two ways to get out. Number one, at a loss. Okay, if at a loss, where do you, uh, where do you get out of a trade? It's where the market tells you you're wrong, okay? Easy, uh, easily said, uh, not as easy, uh, easily done. But with, uh, with technical analysis, using levels, using, um, you know, uh, using um, pullbacks and retracements, et cetera, uh, you have very straightforward places to place your stop loss and to get out of the market when the market is telling you you're wrong. Now, number two, which is what we all hope for, is profit. Now, uh, if you're able to get out at a profit, what I would hope is that preferably you get out at a multiple of your defined risk. Now, what is a multiple of your defined risk? Well, simply what this means is that a multiple could be anything. It could be, uh, it could be your, your profit could be one times your, your uh, defined risk. It could be two times. It could be, uh, you know, 2.5 times. It could be three times. It could be one and a half times. Uh, it, it really doesn't matter. It, I mean, it does matter, but that, that you have to decide upon based upon the strategy you're, you're trading uh, and all of that. One thing I would caution, though, is, uh, you know, one thing I would not do is to make my profit less than 
my uh, risk, okay? So uh, if you're targeting a profit that's less than your risk, and if you do that on a consistent basis, you better make sure that you have a high win ratio, a very high win ratio. Otherwise, you're playing a losing game, okay? So um, generally speaking, uh, you know, it's very difficult to find a, an extremely high win ratio. If you can do that, then and only then, should you be able to make your profit, your targeted profit, less than your defined risk. But generally speaking, what I always tell people is that uh, you should strive to uh, have your profit at least equal to your risk, but preferably higher. Preferably, uh, you know, when I say preferably higher, I'm looking for, uh, you know, usually I'm looking for at least one and a half to one. One and a half uh, is my profit um, uh, as opposed to my risk, and uh, or two to one. Um, you know, three to one or what have you. The higher you go, though, you know, I, I must caution you, the higher you go in terms of if your profit is far outweighing your risk, then uh, all other, all other uh, factors kept constant, your win ratio will suffer. Why is that? Because if you're shooting for a lot of profit and you've got a very tight stop loss, then uh, just through probability alone, you're going to be hitting your stop loss more often, and you're going to be losing more often, okay? So you have to find a balance, okay? So I'm not saying uh, be uh, extremely um, unrealistic in setting your profit targets. Uh, if you're setting your profit targets at 10 to 1, uh, you know, 10 times your risk, then, uh, you know, you'll find that you're going to be losing a lot of the time. And that's never good, especially for your trading psychology. So you need to find a, uh, a balance uh, with respect to that. Okay, so uh, that's my main philosophy in terms of finding uh, trade, uh, trading entries and exits. I'm going to get into the specifics in a second. Um, before I do, though, let me uh, show you this. I know many of you have seen this before, but, you know, I like to uh, stress this principle that I have uh, called TPB because it uh, underlies the vast majority of the strategies uh, I'm sorry, the vast majority of the strategies that I, uh, that I use and that I talk about, okay? So uh, what is this key principle? TPB is you identify the trend, you watch for a pullback, you trade the breakout. Very, very simple, okay? Um, and I'll show you how to do this on my charts. Um, question here, Jano, Jano, uh, Abraham. Uh, so what uh, risk-reward... Uh, do you recommend for an average guy? Uh, it, it really depends. Uh, what I generally use uh, is uh, around two, two to one or two and a half to one. I know from a trend following perspective that may seem a little low, but uh, you know I like to keep my win ratio uh, as high as possible while also making sure that my uh, uh, that my uh, you know my reward is uh, outweighing my risk. So for me, uh, you know, for m many of the strategies that I use, I generally speaking go for two to one, two and a half to one, or, or what have you. Okay. Uh, one two three pattern. Uh, yeah, that, that's I'm not going to go into the one two three pattern uh, as of yet, but uh, you know this you could say has something to do with that. But uh, you know this is my general principle. Now, uh, Black Hat, how do you determine your targets? Uh, I'll tell you in a second. Okay, so uh, identify the trend. So first of all, you have a trend. Second of all, you're looking for some type of a pullback. And we're seeing these pullbacks on, for example, Euro dollar and dollar yen right now, if you take a look at the daily chart. Um, so, you know, possible opportunities on, on that. And I'll show you some other opportunities in the past several months. Remarkable opportunities on dollar yen, obviously, if you've taken a look at, uh, a, you know, a daily chart. Uh, also, great opportunities on euro dollar. But anyway, so uh, we're looking for a trend, first of all. We're looking for the pullback now. Uh, and then we're looking for a resumption of the trend in the form of a breakout. Why is a breakout a resumption of a trend? Well, first of all, don't I want to get in, you know, if you take a look at this trend here, don't I want to get in on the very bottom of this pullback? Okay, isn't that the best place to get in? Absolutely that is, okay? It is, but how do I know it's going to stop there? Okay, I, I have no idea it's going to stop there. You know, maybe it stopped uh, a little bit uh, higher, a little bit lower. I have no idea it's going to stop there, okay? Now, once it turns and momentum, short-term momentum, is showing that uh, there's a breakout in the direction of the original trend, at that point, I have some indication that perhaps the trend is, uh, the uh, price is going back, momentum is going back in the direction of the trend. Now, am I sure of it? I mean, could it break out above this, uh, this uh, breakout level? I get in, and then it comes back down and takes me out? 
you know, of course I can't be sure. But this is giving, uh, this is called high probability trading. This is not called, you cannot have any guarantees in this. So you get into that trade, you have some indication that perhaps the trend is res resuming, you know, I mean, uh, the momentum is resuming back in the direction of the trend, and that for me is a higher pr probability entry into the trend. Now, if you uh, recall what I said before, uh, there's one way, uh, one way to get into a trade, and that's in the best direction. Uh, at the best possible price. So uh, this is the best direction with the trend. The best possible price is after a pullback, and after the pullback shows some uh, uh, some indication of resuming. Okay, so that's the best way to get in. Now, what's the best way to get out? Well, uh, right after you get in on this breakout, then you, you can place your stop loss right under the low of the pullback. Okay, and that is where the market is telling you you're wrong. So if you get in on this blue line right here on this breakout, and then price subsequently comes back down and, and takes you out of that trade at that stop loss, then that is the market telling you that you were wrong about it. You were wrong about the resumption of the trend, and therefore you should move on. Okay? So you take your loss, you move on. Losses are part of trading. Uh, bottom line there. Okay? So uh, you have your stop loss there. Now, uh, the question here, uh, Black Cat, how do you determine your targets? Well, there are many ways to determine your targets. From a technical perspective, many, many ways. Uh, you could take a look at chart patterns. You could took, uh, take a look, if you're going long, you could take a look at further resistance levels. Uh, one of the key ways I do it is right in this uh, diagram right here, okay? So this is, uh, if, you, if, you've, uh, if you've settled upon a reward-to-risk ratio, at that point, you could take your defined risk, and defined risk is very easy to, to measure. Once you have your entry, then uh, uh, in a long trade, you have your stop loss right here. Okay, you simply uh, take your uh, entry minus your stop loss. That is your uh, defined risk. That number of pips is your defined risk. And then from there, you could take your reward to risk ratio. And I, I should caution that you should test anything you do. Absolutely test it. If you have a strategy, test it over and over. Manually back test it, okay, and forward test it. And uh, then and only then can you, uh, you know, determine what's the best reward to risk ratio for your specific strategy. So we, uh, once we have the risk in this case, then I have my reward based upon my reward to risk ratio. In this case, this is about two, two and a half uh, to one. Okay, so if you take a look here, my reward here is about two to two and a half times my risk, and that for me is a relatively good one. Okay, relatively optimal, especially uh, for you know some of the strategies that I use, and one of which I'll show you today. Okay, so uh, uh, that's my risk, that's my reward, and uh, you know, uh, will you get stopped uh, stopped out on this? Yeah, you could very very well get stopped out. Will you often get stopped out? You could very well. But at the same time, if you have a good reward-to-risk ratio, you're following the trend, you're taking the pullbacks, then, uh, you know, uh, what you could uh, certainly look to target is uh, consistent profitability overall on a net basis. Okay, that's what you're looking to, uh, to get out of this. Okay, so take your, take your losses, but make sure your trading plan incorporates those losses so that ultimately you can target consistent profitability. Okay, so that's it. Uh, TPB. Tr uh, trend, pullback, breakout, and uh, this is what it looks like. Now, underlying pr uh, principle through all this, risk control through stop loss. Okay, let's move on uh, to, uh, this, is, uh, this is a historical example on, on gold, just to show you this, but uh, I'm going to show you on my live charts in a minute. Um, simply, you, you know, how do you, uh, how do you on this, uh, I'm sorry, how do you on this uh, chart right here determine what the trend is? There are many ways to do it, one of which is you could use this, um, you could use a moving average, okay, to look at the slope of the moving average. You could use this trend line right here. This happens to be an ideal, um, an ideal example, but I'll show you uh, examples that are not so ideal in a minute. So uh, you have uh, an ideal example here of gold moving in an uptrend. You're connecting the lows in an uptrend for an uptrend support line. At that point, you see retracements, corrections, pullbacks. I don't care what you call them. What they are are rests within the trend, consolidations with the trend, um, where price goes against the trend for a little bit, and then uh, ultimately may resume the trend. So as we can see here, we have an uptrend. We connect these, uh, these three lows right here, three or four lows right here. Okay, we have this uptrend, and then uh, at this point, it pulls back to the line within this uptrend. When it pulls back to this line, at that point, we can draw a counter trend resistance line. This is also a trend line, 
Okay? It's a short-term trend line that's going against the overall trend. So at this point, we have a counter trend line right here that we could look for potential breakouts. So trend, pull back to the line, break out above this counter trend line. At that point, we could look for um, a potential entry into this um, into this trend trade. Once we get into that potential entry, entry into that trend trade, we could place our stop loss right below the low of the pullback, which in, in this case is the low of this pullback right here. Okay, and then um, and then look for uh, look for a multiple of our risk. So again, once we have the entry right here, we have our stop loss right here. We uh, take that as our defined risk. Then we can multiply by our uh, reward to risk ratio, and at that point we could find a potential target to the upside. Okay, this works in the same fashion to the downside. It's just the opposite. Okay, uh, question, uh, Black Cat, the direction of the trend has to be on the time frame you trade, or do you look at the higher time frame? Great question. I'm going to get to that in a second. Uh, James, do you look for, uh, Leonard asked, uh, James, do you look for two touches or three touches to draw your trend line? Well, uh, that's also a great question. Uh, Leonard, uh, two touches or three touches? Well, first of all, you could draw any trend line with two touches alone. Whether uh, subsequent price action follows that is another story. Okay. If it touches and respects it the third time, then you know you got something there. Okay. Two touches alone is, uh, you know, not a very valid trend line. It's a trend line, not a very valid one. Okay. Only until it uh, touches the third time, third time and respects it, uh, can it be uh, considered possibly, a, a, you know, a very strong trend line. Okay. So uh, that's what we have here. Okay. Um, and then Black Cat, as, as to uh, time frame you trade, uh, I trade, uh, I generally look at the daily and the hourly, but I'm going I'm to talk about that in a second. Uh, so I'm looking both at the, uh, the daily and the hourly. On the daily, I'm generally looking for the trend. And then on the hourly, I'm looking for, uh, you know, to make it more granular, to look for potential, uh, potentially high probability entries within that trend. Okay. Yes, Leonard. I, I do use multiple time frame analysis in many cases. Okay. Now, just to, just quickly, um, you know, why am I bringing this up? These uh, these patterns right here. Well, you know, whatever you call these things, you know, like these flags over here on the right or these pennants. I don't care what you call them, but what do they represent? What is the story that these chart patterns are telling you? They're telling you that there's a pullback or there's a re uh, retracement or there's a consolidation within that trend. And for me, arguably, those types of pullbacks are the best places to get into trends. Okay, you see flags all over the place. You know, give me a chart. I'll show you uh, 100 different flags or pennants. Okay, and those are oftentimes reliable and they give you, uh, you know, uh, potential, uh, uh, potential continuations of the trend. And these, for me... Uh, I use them all the time, okay? I'll, I'll show you one on, the, on Euro dollar on the daily chart in a second. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, flags and pennants, uh, triangles as well, you know, these are all continuation patterns that I use over and over and over again. Why? Because they're telling me a really strong story, that there is a trend, there is a pullback or a consolidation. A breakout of that pattern is, for me, a potentially good opportunity to get into, uh, you know, a particular trade. Okay, so we use uh, breakouts of consolidations or retracements, corrections as entry zones. Uh, they can be uh, triangles, flags, pennants, rectangles, wedges, etc. Um, you know, uh, what do they represent? Uh, these represent short-term counter-trend moves or consolidations. And what I like to do is trade breakouts of these moves in the direction of the trend. Okay, now Leonard uh, or uh, Black Cat, we get back to multiple time frames. Now, uh, you know, I, I do have a multiple time frame trading strategy that I use uh, pretty often, um, but when I, even when I'm not using that, uh, you might be able to find the recording on fxstreet.com. Of, uh, you know, I had a few prior webinars on that. But even when I'm not using uh, that particular multiple time frame trading strategy, I'm still using multiple time frames. How? Well, you know, anyone will tell you. You look at an hourly chart, you look at a five-minute chart, you look at a, a daily chart, much of the time, they're going to be completely different trends, okay? One's going to be an uptrend, one's going to be a downtrend, the other's going to be a consolidation, okay? That happens all the time. So what are we looking to do? We're looking to seek agreement 
amongst these time frames. Okay, so as I just mentioned to Black Cat, if we're using, uh, if I'm looking at a daily chart and an hourly chart, I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at what the trend is on the daily chart and preferably as strong a trend as possible on the daily chart, okay, as we see on dollar yen, for example. Um, you know, I'm looking for that, the strongest trend possible. Once I see that, then I see this might be a good opportunity to get into this trade on pullbacks, okay? And then I, I could I look on the one-hour chart, and I'm looking for breakouts of counter-trend uh, counter lines, okay? Just like what I showed you on the gold chart uh, just before. I'm looking for breakouts above counter-trend lines in the case of going long on an uptrend, okay? So what, how is that seeking agreement? Well, basically what that's saying is the daily chart is showing an uptrend. The hourly chart is now showing a breakout, momentum, short-term momentum, back in the direction of the, daily, uh, of the daily trend. For me, that's high probability trading, okay? So, uh, again, I'm going to look on longer-term time frames for the trend time frame, and I'm going to resolve only to trade in the direction of the trend on that trend time frame. Now, one thing I want to uh, take a look at here is um, uh, Aussie dollar. You know, you look at Aussie dollar, and you think, uh, you know, how do you, how do you trade that? We've been in a, a pretty... Uh, you know, we've been in a range trading situation for quite some time, you know, between, uh, I believe, 101.50 and 106 area. Now, uh, where is it going there? Well, you take a look, uh, you know, you could trade the trend within a range as well. So, you know, if you take a look at the trend uh, for now, I mean, uh, despite what happened in the past couple of days, but um, for now we have a downtrend within that range. So that is also uh, a potential possibility. But that's not as strong as... You know, I'm looking for the best possible trade I could find. So I'm going to be looking not at the Aussie dollar because we are in generally a, a range trading situation. I'm going to be looking at um, more at, uh, you know, for example, dollar yen or euro yen as well as uh, euro dollar because we see strong trends within there. Also euro pound, by the way. Okay, so uh, very, very uh, big uh, uptrend in euro pound as well. Okay. So uh, the trend can be determined by trend lines, moving averages, visual estimation, et cetera. Estimation, et cetera. Uh, I'm mainly looking at trend lines and moving averages. Okay, so those are multiple time frames. Okay, just a few more things before I get to my charts. Uh, in terms of how do you get into trades, I mean, this is all about entries and exits. Usually uh, what I do is, uh, first of all, you know, I look, for, uh, I look for a trend, right? And then I look for a pullback, and then I look for a breakout in the direction of the trend. Now, what, you know, how do I actually enter into that trend? Um, I'm, you know, am I going to do it when, uh, when uh, price action, let's say if I'm going long, when price action hits a resistance line, am I going to go long there because I'm anticipating a breakout? Absolutely not. I'm not going to do that, okay? What I'm going to be doing is I'm looking for a breakout, and then... I'm looking for a breakout above, uh, let's say, a resistance line, and then from there, I'm looking for the next bar to surpass the high of that breakout bar, okay? Uh, most of the time, that's what I'm looking for in terms of my entry filter. Why am I doing that? Well, first of all, we see the breakout occur, and then, uh, but I want, I want a little bit more um, confirmation. So I'm looking for the next bar to show uh, even shorter, uh, you know, uh, sh a shorter term momentum that price is actually moving in the direction of the breakout. Therefore, I'm going to wait for that uh, uh, entry filter to occur. So I'm looking for, if I'm going long, I'm looking for the breakout to occur, and then I'm looking for the next bar to surpass the high of that breakout. Okay. So that's uh, just a little bit about uh, entry filters. There are a lot of different types of uh, entry filters. Some people use, um, for example, uh, you know, a number of pips above, let's say you're going long, number of pips above the breakout. Uh, I, I generally think that's a little bit random, so I don't really use that. But, um, uh, you know, that could also be used. Okay. Okay, now, uh, let's, let's move into this. Now, uh, this is just really quickly about this before I get to my charts, is that a lot of people ask me, you know, uh, you have your reward to risk ratio, you got your profit target, you got your stop loss, are you managing trades at all? Uh, you know, generally speaking, if I have a good reward to risk ratio that has shown through time that it, uh, you know, it has worked uh, on a net uh, profitable basis for the strategy that I'm using, then I will leave it as is. But if you want to uh, look to lock in, um, lock in um, your profits and manage your trades, then this is one way to do it, okay? So let's say you get in long in this middle line right here, okay? You get in a long trade right here. Uh, and you have your initial risk down here on the bottom line here. That's your initial stop loss, okay? Now, 
you could have your profit target, let's say, two times up, two times your initial risk, okay, which is, uh, you see this bracket right here as initial risk. Okay, now, uh, if uh, price, price goes up in your favor, okay, uh, if it goes half your initial risk, what you could possibly do is move your initial stop loss to um, half of your uh, initial, uh, initial risk, okay? So there you have it there. And then, uh, you know, if uh, price moves one time, uh, one time your initial risk, then you can move your stop loss to break even. That's one way to do it if you want to manage your trades, okay? So uh, this is uh, one way that has worked in the past for me. Uh, generally speaking, though, I, I do like to stick to my, uh, my you know, reward-to-risk ratio that, uh, again, I stress that I've tested on many occasions, um, both back test and forward tested. Okay. And last thing before I get to my charts is, um, you know, I talk about this a lot and uh, for good reason because, uh, you know, I'm always looking for confluence. And what is confluence? Well, confluence could be many things. One thing could – confluence basically means agreement, okay? So what does it mean? On, on a time frame basis, it means that, uh, you know, that your time frames agree with each other. So like I said before, if your hourly chart and your four-hour chart and your daily chart, for example, are all agreeing that this is looking bullish – then perhaps this is bullish, okay? So, uh, you know, that's the type of confluence I'm looking for. But not only that, I'm looking for a confluence of technical tools. So, for example, let's say price, uh, um, you know, price makes a pullback, okay? It pulls back to uh, a key level, let's say um, 92, uh, 92 on, uh, on uh, the dollar yen, okay? It pulls back to 92. Let's say that level is also... I'm not sure if it is or not, but let's say it's also uh, some, some type of 38% point, 38% um, uh, Fibonacci retracement, okay? Let's say also it's a pivot point. You know, let's say also there's a moving average there. You know, I, I'm not saying that you have to use all of these different factors, but let's say that these, uh, all these uh, technical tools are agreeing that this point at 92 on dollar yen is, is the place that it, it's looking to bounce. Then uh, perhaps... It'll bounce there, okay? So the more factors that are agreeing, the better in terms of finding high probability trades, okay? So why is that? Well, first of all, I think it goes without saying. Uh, time frames, if you have agreement among time frames and all your time frames are telling you this is looking bullish, then, uh, you know, I believe that uh, provides you with some high probability that perhaps this is looking bullish, okay? But uh, in terms of technical tools, why does this work this way? If there's agreement of technical tools, why? Because, okay, some big traders or some institutions, let's say, uh, you know, it, a lot of institutions uh, trade based upon technicals uh, as well as fundamentals. But let's say uh, that, uh, you know, some of the big traders are looking at uh, the, the 92 level on dollar yen, okay? Let's say other, tra other traders are looking at the 38% Fibonacci retracement. And let's say even other traders are looking at uh, some moving average, Okay. You have all these different traders. They're looking at different things. But if they come at the, if they all occur at the same place, at the same, near the same price level, then perhaps you're going to find something occurs at that level. We're looking for what's called a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay? There could be uh, one guy or one institution that's looking at the 92 level, and he's looking at the 38% per, uh, level. The other guy is looking at the moving average and the 38% level. You know, the other guy is looking at uh, whatever he's looking at, you know, he could be looking at uh, Elliott Wave or, uh, or you know, some um, uh, Ichimoku or something, okay? And, uh, and they see that as a key level. If this all comes together, I think it's going to be a key level. Okay, so that's confluence. Now, uh, these are some examples, uh, some of which I, I, just, uh, I just talked about. But uh, these are some examples of uh, confluence, which uh, always tend to help when you're trading uh, in the Forex market. Okay. Let's go to the charts. <coughs> Hopefully you can see my charts. Uh, I'm using, uh, this is a daily chart of Euro dollar, okay? And uh, you guys have all probably seen this already. Now, what do we have here? We have an obvious uptrend. Right now, do we have an uptrend? You know, if I, if I go like this, do we have an uptrend? Um, n not really. But 
if we have a, uh, if we look at the daily chart again I'm concentrating on the daily and the hourly if we have a daily chart here we could see that apparently we are in somewhat of a strong uptrend okay and yeah we've had corrections to the downside but uh, those corrections those retracements those pullbacks can be played in very good uh, in very uh, you know it could be played in, in effective ways so uh, you know what are all these little lines here well, these little lines, they could, be, uh, they could be pendants, they could be flags, they could simply be counter trend uh, resistance lines or what have you. Did I draw, these, uh, did I draw all these on the uh, daily chart? No, I didn't. I drilled down to the hourly chart to draw these. That's why some of these look funny. Okay, if you take a look at uh, this one over here, uh, it, looks, it looks a little bit funny, um, but that on the hourly chart is a very nice pendant pattern. Okay? Um, Black Cat, how far uh, back do you look at in terms of history? Uh, good question. I have history going back many years, but basically I'm looking for the beginnings of uh, trends, the beginnings and ends of trends. Okay, so um, so for, for this, for example, for Euro dollar, I'm looking at the beginning of the trend right back here at uh, in in July of 2012 right along right around the 124 uh, 12040 level did i know back then that this was the beginning of the trend absolutely not i did not okay but over time we saw that there were uh, you know that uh, the trend did change okay um, so uh, you know many points along this line we could have played those trends uh, tiffany James, can you define when a fifth level is a major level versus a minor level? Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, the question is, can you define when a fifth level is a major level versus a minor level? Yeah, um, uh, it, it really depends on the run your uh, on the run, you know, whether it's a bullish run or a bearish run that you're measuring. So, uh, you know, generally what we do is we, uh, if we're looking for measuring a bullish run, we're looking for uh, you know uh, lows to highs. Uh, from left to right, and uh, if we're looking for bearish ones, we're looking from, uh, you know, also from left to right, from highs to lows. Now, uh, when is it a major level and when is it a minor level? A uh, major level is simply uh, a more major uh, run, okay? If you have a run, if you have a, a bullish run within a, a larger bearish run, that bullish run is going to be more minor than uh, the larger bearish run. Okay, so that's how I measure. You know, it's not, it's not uh, something that has, uh, for me, that has uh, clear-cut rules. I'm looking for major runs to um, uh, to dictate whether it's a major level, uh, you know, and then a minor run to, to dictate whether it's a minor level. Um, Boytke, how do you handle uh, economic data releases and news? Uh, as a technical trader, I generally st uh, try to stay away from those, okay, unless I'm in a longer-term trade. Um, Black Cat, if you fib the high from May to the low of last year, went in downtrend and retraced back. Okay, gotcha. Uh, Black Cat, yeah, I'm not looking on uh, you know, May to the low of last year, we're in a downtrend and retraced back to a 50% level. Okay, good point, good point. Um, if, uh, I'm not looking uh, that far back. I'm looking at uh, you know what I see at, on the daily chart as what the current trend is, and for me, it's rather clear. Here. So if we take a look, uh, let's go to the dollar yen chart. Uh, if we take a look here, you know, if if we go back in time, we could see that yeah, we, we may still be in a uh, in a downtrend here with a big retracement to the upside. Okay, but um, you know, more of an art than a science. I'm looking at what's the uh, you know on the daily chart, uh, what is the uh, predominant trend that's going on right now? And for me, it's this remarkable trend to the upside that we're seeing right here. Okay, I actually wrote about uh, dollar yen today and how uh, you know we're consolidating uh, we're consolidating right under the lows at uh, you know 94.44, which was uh, you know basically a 33 month high that was just hit uh, on Monday. Now uh, I'm targeting to the upside 95.98 and eventually 100 as well. Uh, this this uptrend has had very very few, if any major retracements or corrections, okay? So within that time span of this uprun, wherever you caught it, wherever you decided, it, uh, you know, we're now in an uptrend, as opposed to this consolidation that occurred for quite some time. Um, wherever you decided that this was an uptrend, at that point, you could have played this uh, all the whole way along, okay? So let's take, a look at, uh, let's take a look at the hourly chart, okay? So let's go 
on dollar yen to the hourly chart. So, uh, you know, within this uptrend, well, first of all, as, as I mentioned, I look on the daily chart to see where the trend is, and it's obvious that it's in a, uh, you know, it's in an uptrend, okay? So, but if you look back here, are we in an uptrend back here? No, we're not. This is, uh, within this uptrend, uh, this very strong bullish trend on the uh, daily chart, we have many instances of corrections, of pullbacks, of consolidations, where you can take advantage of breakouts of these uh, pullbacks and consolidations, okay? So, you know, this is a case in point right here. I mean, I just pick uh, anywhere here. Uh, what we're looking for, okay, so first of all, what do we know? We know that on the daily chart we're in a strong uptrend, okay? And this goes back to around uh, November. Let me see on the, um, okay, so if we go back here, you know, this, this uptrend started back here in around, uh, around um, September of 2012, and then it really accelerated, you know, in hindsight, of course, it really accelerated here in uh, mid-November. Okay, so if we take a look again at the, at the uh, hourly chart of this, uh, we could see, you know, many different instances of places where, you know, we could take advantage of this. So, you know, for example, here, this is right around where it accelerated. So, uh, you know, here we have, uh, you're looking for, you know, if you're going long, okay, within an uptrend, you're looking for counter-trend moves, which are basically just pullbacks, counter-trend moves that you could find significant highs, uh, significant highs that you could connect the highs. So same type of thing. You're drawing a long-term trend line to the upside, short-term trend line to the downside. So you're looking for significant highs. So here we have a significant high here. It pulls back, and then we have a breakout here. That's a, a good possible breakout. So this is a rather large, uh, you know, I mean, on the hourly chart, it's a rather large correction. On the daily chart, you know, not very much. But uh, hourly chart we have here, and then we have breakout to the upside, okay? Same thing all along this, uh, you know, throughout this whole time here. Uh, you know, this is a classic, uh, uh, you know, I don't care what you call it, but this is, a, a, you know, a triangle, a, a pennon, a, you know, you could call it whatever you want to call it, but this is what it is. What stories is telling you? We've got a strong uptrend, okay? We've got a consolidation. We've got uh, resistance, okay? And then uh, we've got support down here. But I don't really care about support here because I'm, I'm trading in an uptrend, okay? So we've got a, a somewhat of a consolidation or a slight pullback, break out to the upside. Same thing over here. We're uh, connecting the higher, uh, the, the highs in, uh, for a counter trend move. Same thing over here break to the upside, that's what I'm looking, that's exactly what I'm looking for, okay? So uh, we're looking to connect the, uh, connect the highs in this uh, uptrend, okay? So many different places uh, you could do that. Um, you know, some are big, some are small, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, you're, looking for, uh, you're looking for these pullbacks and breakouts. Now, will you get a stop out on these? Yeah, you very well could. But for me, this is higher probability trading because, uh, you're, you know, you're trying to jump on trends. And when you do win on these trends, you're winning uh, more than you're losing, okay? Um, and that, that depends on your risk-reward ratio, okay? So uh, many instances here of places you get in on this, uh, on this dollar-yen chart, you know, this is a great one right here. Okay, we're connecting significant highs. Now, when, when, when I say significant highs, um, you know, you may ask me, what's significant? Well, you know, uh, generally I'm looking for, uh, you know, it, it's more, again, it's more of an art than a science. I'm looking for, uh, you know, highs that are, uh, highs that are um, you know, in this case, if you're going long, highs that are well-defined. And in this case, we see many cases here of highs that are well-defined. And this is also, um, you know, a triangle pattern right here. Okay, same type of thing here. Okay, uh, now not only am I looking for this type, these types of counter trend moves, I'm looking for breakouts above uh, uh, horizontal support and resistance. Now, where do these uh, where do these lines come from? These horizontal uh, support and resistance lines come from? They simply come from the daily chart. Okay, so uh, I'm looking back in time, and at this point for the dollar yen, I'm looking way back in time. Okay, because uh, there's not much precedence. So I'm looking back here, let's say, to um, this is May of 2010, where we had pretty strong uh, resistance here at 95. 95 is a key level not only because of uh, resistance here, but also because it's a key round number. And uh, that's why I have this uh, target up here at 95, you know, showing us that... Um, uh, showing us that, that, you know, although I do have to go way back in time, this is a key level for me. Okay. 
So uh, these counter trend lines uh, can be played uh, as breakouts, but also can these uh, so can these um, uh, horizontal support and resistance levels that I derive on the daily chart. Now, uh, people ask me, you know, how do you get your support and resistance levels? Mostly it's through turns uh, in the past, okay, uh, significant turns in the past. Now, do I look on, hourly, on the hourly chart or on shorter-term charts for support and resistance levels? Yes, I do. But my most important ones are by far the ones that I find on the daily chart. I like to look at stronger support and horizontal support and resistance levels. Therefore, I'd like to look on the daily chart or sometimes even higher, okay? Um, in terms of the short-term support and resistance levels, yeah, they, they can oftentimes uh, work as well, but, uh, you know, the more valid ones are, are the longer-term ones. Now, in terms of uh, these uh, counter-trend moves, these breakouts above these uh, levels here, these are mostly derived from my shorter-term chart where I'm looking for continuations of the trend. Okay, so let's, uh, let's uh, address some of these questions here. Um, let's see. Trace back to... Okay, yeah, Black Hat, uh, yeah, uh, point well taken, Black Hat. Uh, Boyke, can you explain what you mean by staying away from economic, news re uh, economic releases and news except when in longer-term trades? Yes, let me uh, explain that. Well, basically what I mean by that is that, um, you know, if I'm in a longer-term trade, okay, let's say I'm long uh, uh, euro dollar uh, and or dollar yen. If I'm in a longer-term trade, I'm not necessarily going to get out of that trade just because there's a big uh, news release coming coming up, okay? But what I will do is that if I have a, if I have a trigger to get into a short-term trade, uh, let's say, uh, you know, right before, right before uh, non-farm payrolls, okay, then uh, I'm going to think twice about getting into that trade, okay, especially if it occurs uh, right before, right during, or, uh, you know, immediately after um, non-farm payrolls or, or some uh, announcement like that. Okay, so that's exactly what I mean. Uh, you know, in a longer term trade, I'm not going to get out. I'm not going to be scared away by the uh, news releases because I'm in a longer term, uh, you know, position trade. But if I'm in a short term trade that I'm considering getting into, uh, I'm going to think twice and probably not get into it uh, yet and wait for what the uh, news release uh, shows. Okay. Okay. Um, so basically, you know, it all comes down to, uh, and uh, let me just uh, close this out here. Uh, basically, it all comes down to uh, finding the trend. And, uh, yeah, I, I showed you some examples on the euro dollar. But finding the trend uh, and then finding pullbacks uh, in the form of uh, counter trend moves or consolidations and then breakouts above that. Simple as that. Now, in terms of entries, uh, you know, you're looking for entries uh, using an entry filter, preferably and you always have your stop loss uh, in place. Uh, and you have to incorporate your stop loss and your losses into your uh, trading plan, um, and you've got to test it, okay? Uh, now, uh, in terms of, uh, yeah, in terms of exits, again, very important, you get out, uh, no regrets, you get out with the market tells you you're wrong, and preferably your uh, profit targets are at a multiple um, I'm not going to say the higher the better, but uh, at a multiple of your uh, stop of your uh, defined risk, okay? And that is all up to your testing. All right. If there are no other questions, uh, let me just uh, let me just uh, type in my let me just type in my uh, email address right here. Okay. That's my uh, email address. Uh, if, you, if any of you have any questions or you want to copy my slides or what have you, please feel free to email me. Um, Black Cat, which is more, more important, entries or exits? Uh, they're both extremely important. You know, uh, a, a lot of people will tell you uh, entries don't matter. Uh, entries absolutely matter. Uh, some people say that uh, exits don't matter. Well, that's uh, absolutely false. Uh, entries and exits, for me, are probably equal, of equal importance. Okay, you want to get in at a good price. You want to get out at a profit, preferably. Okay, so th they're equally important. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, please feel free to email me if you have any questions, and I'll uh, see you next time.